7 a.m. here in Medellin, Colombia, in Sabaneta, where I live. Today, I'll drive 12 hours to the north coast. Not, not, not exactly to the coast, but it's uh, to a historical town called Mumpox. Uh, you can also call it Mumpos. Uh, it's to visit my friend uh, Richard, who has a hotel there. This is my first big trip, so definitely a little nervous, uh, but a lot of different things going wrong. I uh, kind of got to expect that. I'm kind of expecting like something will go wrong. Um, also, in terms of safety, definitely a little scared, but uh, I'm just going to try and drive safe. You know, hopefully everything goes okay. It's, I'm going to split it into two, uh, two days of driving, so I plan to uh, hit the midway point at six hours today and sleep, but... All right, so about 40 minutes into the trip, I've kind of like left the, the greater Medellin area. And uh, from here, it's pretty much all northbound. So you can see up on that sign, it says Costa Atlantica, the Atlantic coast. I'm about uh, one hour away from Taraza, which is uh, the three seventy-five percent of the way to Caucasia, which is half of the trip. So Medellin to Caucasia, six hours, and I'm almost at hour four point five, I guess. So it's been a oh man, honestly, it's like I've never done, I've never ridden this long, so it's like definitely getting sore and. Oh man, but it's super nice out. Yeah, the only, I can definitely tell where it gets dangerous. It's like, 
people are trying to pass each other and then the trucks are constantly slowing and yeah it's, uh, you got you just got to be so aware all the time it's like if i arrive five minutes late like it's, it's, uh, better than dying so One hour until the next gas station, and then from there it should be one, one and a half hours to Mampa, so two and a half hours. It's 11 a.m. Overall today I felt great, obviously because of the great sleep. Now, the butt thing is a problem. Like, you just can't sit on this thing for more than four hours without your butt telling you, like, this is not comfortable. Alright people, so welcome to Mompox. Uh, I'm a little groggy right now because I just had a nice nap. I think after the last two days of just like really intense six hours per day driving on the motorcycle, which as I've learned, six hours driving on a motorcycle is way different from six hours driving on a car. I'm just, I think today I'm like, I'm gonna be as lazy as I want. So I just had a pretty good nap. Yeah, so I am here to visit my friend Richard who owns the uh, the hotel, La Casa Amarilla. And uh, Richard also owns two other buildings, but now he, he has a home here and then he has the first hotel, which is over there. And he bought and finally restored a second one, which I think took him like five years. So, um, it's it's definitely a strange part of the country or, or strange little town because it's it's this beautiful Colonial town on the banks of the Rio Magdalena the, the, the uh, Magdalena River um, But the Magdalena goes from almost the top of the country. I Think it's like close to Cartagena or Barranquilla it goes all the way down to Huila, which is one of the southernmost departments so um, Richard was telling me that this was essentially the highway. And here in Mompas, Mompas was a strategic point, um, closer to the north, but it was a strategic point in which I would assume boats and ships had to pass through going north or south. 
it's just strange to me because I suppose once the once you know cars and and formal highways were built, um, you know I think a lot of people just st uh, stopped caring about this place, as as Richard sort of explained to me. And um, so what happened was they didn't tear down all the colonial architecture, which is still here. And so finally, to get to my point, why is it strange? Well, it's strange because the northern departments, a lot of the northern departments are just simply forgotten by the the the, the governments of the the department of the state. There's just so much of the departments that aren't cared for, and then so it takes you like so long to get to Montpass because it's really really in the interior from that that from the major highway I was in, right? Like two and a half hours from either of the two highways, and you know once you go in the, you know the road conditions get really bad and there's just quite a lot of poverty and then you get to Mompas and it's like this beautiful colonial town so that's why I say it's strange but it is clear to me that the probably the national government is investing in more like road infrastructure because this is a tourism driver right that it's in their best interest to create better roads and you're starting to see that like they just finished that beautiful nice bridge I don't even um, basically it, it's a really super small town and it, it it sort of goes horizontally just across the river like there's really like if you go up there up, up opposite of the river there's really not much after this street I think it's like three streets that go horizontal and and then you know maybe like I don't know six or maybe like eight blocks that go all the way down right so a lot of these buildings I mean they're all colonial almost like that are close to the river well, among the highlights I did see um, three generations of a family on a moto yesterday here in Mampas saw uh, a mother her two kids and her mother so four passengers on a moto which like I thought three was a lot so that was definitely big um, I, I, sh I shouldn't really joke about that though because it's, it's like it's merely a representation of the economic disadvantages that these people have. I mean, like, when you're in an isolated part of the country, you can't just hail an Uber whenever you want. So it's like, yes, people are going to be utilizing their modes of transportation uh, as much as possible. I tend to, my tourism, like, I really like cities. And I like small towns that aren't like tourist heavy. You know, I, I do. I try to avoid tourist towns like this because I feel so weird, man. It's like a, you're 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 merely play, playing the role of tourist, and I just don't want to do that. Like, I think you guys can kind of catch my drift. Um, but nevertheless, it's still cool just to see this. It's awesome, you know. When I do come out here, it's usually if I want to see a friend. So in this case, Richard. Or maybe if I really, really want to see it, but that's rare. In that case, I'll spend two days here and I'll, I'll be happy about my two days and try to treat people nicely and and then get on my way. Well, if you ever uh, visit Montpos, I recommend La Montposina. I just had lunch here. It's about a 25 minute walk from the, all the attractions. So it's a decent walk, but the, the server was so kind. They're just obsessed with this table. It's hilarious.
great stay at Richard's Hotel. Uh, staff treated me nice there. I like to get like a quick, fast start to the morning, especially like, you know, I'm, I'm even like a little sweaty right now, but this is, you know, at 6 a.m., it's just way better climate than driving at 2 p.m. It's just insane. It gets so hot. Okay, gracias. I got uh, 100, about 110 kilometers, cost uh, 5,500, which is like, Outside of San Alberto, tired. One and a half hours left, which should be a breeze. The roads have been amazing today. Yeah, I just had a nice little coke. Gotta get the sugars. This is where I stayed last night, just on the side of a highway here, which, uh, you know, I was saying to a friend, life, life hits you fast when you, uh, when you find yourself sleeping at this hotel for a night, but listen, it was just, it was either do the trip in two nights or complete the trip in one night, and I decided, okay, I could do that if I kind of drove six hours and I guess I could sleep here, so... I decided to do that. 
it's raining, so I'm just kind of waiting it off. I'm gonna have breakfast here. Gracias. All right. It's just a little tiny shop here.